heart. That could be cross-legged or sitting back on your heels. Any still position that works for you. Take an upright spine, turn your gaze low or close your eyes. For a moment, turn your palms up along your legs. And just take in a couple of breaths, feeling the collective and the community. Streaming across the screens. And I hope you know if you're taking this on a recording, that you feel the energy of this community always with you. And then a simple gesture, turn the palms down along your legs. Really ground into your own individuality. I've been going back into a few of my older texts recently, reading them kind of alongside each other. The beauty of the differences and the complementary aspects, a lot of yoga texts when I pick it up sort of enhance that sense of practice being on your own. And as I look at Buddhist text and Christian teachings as well, those are the things I know, they tend to be more in community and yet both complement the other and say you need to do this on your own sometimes, together sometimes. And uh, it brought me a little piece of joy in figuring out exactly this BU hub where we get that ebb and flow of always underlying community and also the importance of discipline of the individual. Perhaps you can take that into account as you practice today. Nod your chin down to the chest here and rock the head from side to side. Right ear to right shoulder, going right back down to the center, left ear to left shoulder. Just back and forth. And then start to go into a full head roll, giving yourself enough support as the head moves back. Circle the head the opposite direction if you haven't changed already. And then keep the chin down to the chest. Draw the palms together, thumbs to the sternum and Anjali Mudra, cementing again the intention for this practice to uplift both the whole and the individual. We'll release the hands, lift the head, open the eyes, and get into our bigger movement. Come on over to all fours. If you have a blanket and like to pad your knees, Go for it. Cat and cow. Move the spine back and forth. Easy back and forth. Work with the breath. Good. Just keep going there on your cat and cow. Change to downward facing dog. Stretch it out. 
Let the sighs come out of mouth and body. Pedal out the feet. It's always this first downward facing dog that I'm reminded of exactly the movement I did and did not do in the day before. Start to see how that will integrate for this practice. Okay, let's set it back down to the knees. And as you do so, turn your hands out or all the way around. So either fingers to face the long edges of the mat or fingers back to face towards the knees, whichever works best for you. Lift your right leg up like a tiger tail. Swing it far over towards the left side and then set the toes down. Look over your left shoulder so that you can gaze at your foot. And try to shrug that right shoulder towards your ear. So kind of a complex movement, getting in a side body stretch, a little warmth through the hamstrings as we also open up wrist and forearms. Okay, swing it all the way back to the center and knee down. Other side, left leg up, swing it. Tuck the toes, push them down to the ground, look over your right shoulder. Shrug your left ear. Give it a few breaths. Take it all the way back into the center. Lower the left leg and turn your hands around. Full plank pose. Bring it to the toes if you'd prefer. Knees down, of course. But everyone, squeeze your heels in tight. Squeeze your glutes. Lengthen your tailbone, tone the abdomen, look a little bit forward. Remember to breathe. And lower flat down to your yoga mat. I want you to hover your hands right beside you. As if they're down on the mat for cobra, but they're just hovered. And then press your feet down and try to lift your chest. If you're like me, it barely moves. But the intention and the work is there. Squeeze in the glutes. Keep pressing the front of the feet down towards the mat. And try to kind of lift and pulse the chest. Quickly warming up and giving strength to the low back. Okay, and then do press the hands down and give yourself a lift and baby cobra. Nice deep bend in the elbows and squeeze your elbows by your side. Look straight ahead. Lower it all the way down. Press back to child's pose. Knees apart, big toes together. Reach the arms up. Change again, back to downward facing dog. And then add a twist, right hand, hold on to your left leg. Reach all the way down towards your outer ankle if possible. Pull your torso through in that twist. Lower the right hand down. Pay careful attention to the hand that is on the ground. So with the right hand down, claw the earth and press through your thumb and first finger a lot as you grab left hand to the right leg. Okay, undo. Come forward to plank pose. Lower flat down to the mat. Again, hover the hands and try to lift the chest, cobra. And then press the hands down and lift the chest a little bit higher. Maybe you're like 70% of the lift in your cobra now. A little more than halfway. Press it again back to child's pose.
and change to downward facing dog. Okay, going into our side plank variations, balance on your left hand, outer edge of the left foot. Step your right foot halfway up in that kickstand and lift your right hand to the sky. Imagine leaning your head back, right hand, top hand backwards a little bit. Come out of that kickstand side plank, go back to downward facing dog, and do it on the other side. Right hand outer edge of the right foot, step the left foot through, halfway, lift the left arm. And again, back to downward facing dog. Now we get to stand all the way up, look towards your hands, walk yourself forward to the front end of your mat. Stand up, you can roll through however you want, roll your shoulders up, back and down a couple of times. Forward and down. Great, I wanna work a little more opening in the shoulders. This is what I want you to have your strap for. If you don't have a specific yoga strap, a towel or a scarf work well. You could also just imagine that you're holding on to something and do this completely with nothing like this. Okay, but if you have something to hold on to, it'll help. You make it pretty taut so there's no slack in it. And then up and down. Don't worry about getting too technical with this. Definitely have your hands far enough apart that you aren't overly struggling here. If it gets too wide though, it's not gonna do much for you. And then the biggest piece of this is that we don't wanna go one hand at a time, so try not to do this kind of action. It needs to be all together to the best we can. Elbows can bend, just bend both of them at the same rate. Yeah, good. Just a few more times. I often get out my strap and do this before I start teaching. It's a nice daily ritual. Give some juice through the shoulders. One more time as you're doing it, be strong in the abdomen. All right, and then just set it back down. That'll help us as we move through class today. Just get a little bit of floss going. Set it back to downward facing dog. Today's class is spotlighting a pose that in yoga hour we call funky monkey. I've only ever done it one time in teaching and that was this Sunday in preparation. So it's something a little bit different and we'll try to have fun with it. Lift your right leg up into the air, three-legged dog, and step it all the way through into your low lunge. Hands either down on the floor or give yourself some height under one or two blocks to go back and forth in the legs. I bring the blocks out for this Wednesday class so that we make sure that we know those options and variations. You can always use them or not. Okay, stay with your lunge. Take the right hand up in our good old twisted or revolved lunge. Never lets me down this one. And then we're going right to forearm lunge. So both hands to the inside of your foot. Whether you're on some height or palms flat on the ground, try going down to your forearms. At first, keep your back knee up and actually lift the hips higher rather than lower. So kind of higher than you want to. 
see if you can get your shoulders to or even below the line of your front thigh. Then just walk it back up to the hands and switch sides. Step forward or step back first to make that second side happen. Left foot forward, right foot back in the end. And we go through the same three things. Rocking your legs back and forth. We're all doing the same thing, but our own pace, breath, ability. Take the left hand high into your revolved lunge. and then switch to forearm lunge. So again, use some height or don't, but both hands to the inside of your foot. Bend your elbows, start to take the shoulders lower, lower, lower. If it works, go all the way down, right and left forearm. Again here, the back knee wants to sink down and let the back thigh sink down. For right now, I want you to actually try to lift higher rather than lower. I notice that the higher I go, the more I, my uh, seat wants to swing out towards the left side. So you do have to still squeeze it in. Midline action. All right, and then walk it back up to your hands. Blocks out of the way if you were using them. Everybody step back to downward facing dog. And give your left leg a lift for three-legged dog. Set both legs back down. Bend your knees and walk your hands backwards to your feet. Here's where we get our rag doll time. Hold on to your elbows. Nice deep bend in the knees. Try to release in the upper body. Let it be. Slow roll up to standing, move the shoulders up, back and down again, and forward and down. Great, let's make our way back up to the front edge of the yoga mat. A couple of sun salutations, no props needed. Lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Half lift. Step back to plank, chaturanga dandasana, lower down, into bhujangasana, cobra pose, adha svanasana, downward facing dog. Gaze at your hands, ready, jump, feet to the hands, half lift, forward fold, Stand, reach the arms to the sky. Urdva Hastasana, palms together. Let's do it all again just because it works, it's fun. Lift the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Step back, lower down. Cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog. Again, look to the hands. Give it a jump forward. Inhale, half lift, forward fold. Lift the arms up to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit into the thighs and go into a twisted chair pose, left elbow to the outside of the right thigh. Try to bring your palms towards the center and point your right elbow up to the sky. Good, stay right there, breathe here. 
Look down at your right foot. Put your balance into the front toe pads and step your left foot back. Stay in the twist with the lunge now. And then untwist, set the hands down, set the back knee down, arms all the way up. Lower the hands either side of the front foot, step through plank. Here, I just want you to add a push up, down and up. Hold your plank or add one more and then downward facing dog. Side plank, balance on your left hand, the outer edge of your left foot. Stack the feet now and take the right arm up to the sky. Look down at the ground instead of to the side. As you're looking down at your left hand, Try to step the right foot all the way forward into a low lunge. And then meet both feet to the front of the mat. Half lift, forward fold, stand, reach the arms to the sky, palms together, center of the chest. Second side, Utkatasana, bend the knees, sit into your thighs. Now as palms come together and you add the twist, it's right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Good, keep going, breathe here. Look down at your toes, put the balance into the left toes, step your right foot back into your lunge. Twisted lunge. Untwist, set the hands down for a moment, right knee to the ground. Lift the arms up. Monkey lunge. So it's that straight on lunge before we get to mon the funky monkey later. Set the hands down, step back to plank and into side plank, right hand outer edge of the right foot, stack the feet, left arm to the sky. Look down at your right hand. Do your best in one step, though knowing it might be a couple. Get your left foot right beside the right hand into your low lunge with the left hand lifted. And then we're taking it all together, two feet forward, half lift. Forward fold, stand up, arms to the sky. Palms together, center of the chest. Give it two breaths. All right, one more cycle, starting much like sun salutation. Lift the arms up, exhale, forward fold. Half lift, step back to plank. Lower flat down to the mat. Cobra, peel the chest up. Downward facing dog. Lift your right leg high, three-legged dog. Step it all the way through into your low lunge. Warrior two, spin your back heel down. Lift the torso, face the long edge of your mat as you extend the arms in either direction. Bend the right knee a lot and gaze out over the front fingertips. Set your right elbow down to the knee. No need to go lower here, keep elbow to knee. And then left arm palm down overhead. So it's our pretty normal Side angle pose here, helped elbow to knee. 
I just want to get this top arm a little looser, much like the thought of what we were doing with the strap, but now it's just the movement and mobility. Make big rainbow shapes and then full circular shapes with that top arm, just down and around a couple of times. Go the opposite way as well. So go to the front, then the back. Stand back up to warrior two. And then trade to warrior one. Heel toe the back foot in, turn the toes in, and lift both arms up to the sky. Still a nice deep bend of the front knee. Hip shoulders face towards the front short side of your mat. Nicely done. Hands down to the mat, step through plank. Add zero, one, or two push-ups in between here. And then do downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up, three-legged dog. Step it all the way through. And again, you're going to warrior two. Spin the back heel down, stand up, arms extend in either direction. This all starts really hip shoulders open to the side. We want to keep that sense of open energy. Set the elbow to the knee, top arm palm down overhead. Stay right there for a moment. Enjoy the stretch. Good. And then we're just sweeping big full circles with that top arm to give some mobility. You can go either way to start. About three big circles one way and then switch. Go from the back to the front or vice versa. Great, come back to warrior two. Heel toe the back foot in a step or two so that it's easier to rotate and turn in the hips and then arms up to the sky. We do want both feet pretty flat on the mat here. Lower the hands down. Step through to plank. This time, lower flat down, cobra. Downward facing dog. Look forward to your hands. Step or jump all the way to the front end of the mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Stand up, reach the arms high. Palms together, center of the chest. Pause here. Breathe here. Release the arms down by your side, open up, give it a little bit of a shake, all that good reset. So easy standing series, I say easy because they're familiar poses. Have your blocks handy if you like to use them for triangle pose. They can be right in front of your feet as you take a wide stance. And turn your right toes out. From the hips, hinge long. And bring the right hand down to the floor or your yoga block, any height that you're using. Another option is to hold on to your shin instead of floor or block. Okay, top arm up to the sky, open up. I'm not trying to make this more complicated than it is. Two straight arms, two straight legs. Nice long spine. Lovely, we'll stand up and switch to the second side. Turn your toes, change, alter the blocks as needed. Go from the hips first. So I'm gonna push the hips way towards the right, lean as far as I can to the left. Set the bottom hand. Think of opening across shoulders and chest, lift the top hand.
And here there should always be a gentle lean back of the head so that it doesn't feel like there's a weightiness to staying in this position for head, neck, and shoulders. If it doesn't feel good to look up, just look down. Nice way to relieve the suffering. <laughs> Suffering happens. Also, a lot of unnecessary suffering happens. Come all the way up. Try to find ways in this practice to filter out that suffering. Heel toe your feet all the way together. Shake it out for a moment. One more pose that we know, but a little bit more complicated. Wide-legged stance here. We're going for a bound side angle. So we're going to turn the right toes out, bend the right knee. Good way to start can be to use the hand on a block. And if you are using the height of a block, try to go down to the forearm on that hand. If you're not, it just kind of skips. It's out of the way. Hands on the ground with a deep bend of the elbow. What we're looking for here, especially so that then we're not causing further suffering through a bind, is to make sure before you even go for that bind that you're shoulder and knee are in line, or even the shoulder is below the line of the thigh and knee, okay? If that's happening, then you progress. Hand goes under the thigh, and taking the top hand behind your back shouldn't be too far of a reach. Now, if I can, keep shoulder below the line of the knee still at the line of the thigh, then I'm going to pull the uh, tailbone underneath me more. You try doing the same as your head goes more in line with the front toes. My hands are bound much closer to the end of my tailbone and pelvis instead of under the thigh to give a little bit more room. And then come out of it nice and slow. Move it on over to the other side. Change the toes. Think warrior two first. So like in warrior two, it's this funny thing about like, it's hard to get down low, but I notice when I go all the way towards that 90 degree shape, I then actually can sustain it longer because the muscles aren't in half tension, they are full tension, having to work really hard. And then elbow to knee is your first stage. Hand to the ground the second. Maybe forearm on the height of a block if you're using it. The block for me is handy because I can really look and see without having to hold the extra pressure. Is my shoulder below the line of the thigh? If you're adding the bind, go for it, right? Uh, left arm will sweep under the thigh. Apologies if I ever say my rights and lefts incorrectly. Left arm under the thigh, right hand behind your back. Try to scoop your tailbone, send your head towards the line of your front knee and toes and look up. Everything is progressive. Do the parts that make the most sense for you. One thing and the next. Slowly rise up. Get your way out of the pose nice and safe. Bring the toes in, shake it out. Cool, for me today, the most important reason to have blocks handy is coming up in this next stretch. I want you to come down to all fours. If knees are uncomfortable, pad them here. And do have a block handy that you can grab with your hands to sit on in just a moment. Okay, cow face pose. Lift the right leg up and back. Before we go into cow face pose, I want you to do opposite arm and leg, your bird dog here, right leg, left arm extended. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So bird dog here. 
So the engagement, stability, necessary, and the core, don't forget about it as we go into the next pose. Good, set your right knee behind your left. So it's gonna cross right leg behind the left leg. And then I need you to grab your block, if you're using it, if you've got it, and sit on it. So don't sit on the floor, sit on the height of a block. The first or second height as best supports you. The higher the block, the easier the sit. And I know this in and of itself is a lot. We're trying to make the knees come down and touch as much as possible, and the heels kind of stay out away from our side to make all, that all happen. Okay, imagining we were still in that bird dog, the left hand would be up, and then give yourself a pat on the back with the left hand. And take the right hand behind your back, try to crawl up, and take the same sort of clasp that we just were working on inbound side angle, but you don't have to wrap under your thigh anymore. That's our cow face pose. And then release the arms and come back out. Block can be removed for a moment. Untangle yourself. So those cow face legs that we use for funky monkey and in Funky Monkey, I think the importance is hips higher rather than lower, so that's why we're all sitting up on some height. Okay, right leg go, uh, sorry, left leg goes up and back. We're switching sides now. Left leg up and back, extend the right arm out. Again, find the stability and the balance. And even though we're gonna have a seat for cow face pose, I want you to still find that same sense of strength and control that you're having to do right now. Now, left knee goes behind the right leg. Knee to knee, but feet wide, and sit back on your block again. Give yourself, if you've got two blocks, you can even stack one on top of another, like higher hips so that the knees can stay together and not pop up away from one another. We want those knees close as much as possible. Okay, so uh, right hand is high. Give yourself a pat on the back. And then walk your left hand behind you. You might not be able to tell from my angle unless I take my hands a little wider. My fingers don't touch, I'm not worried about it. Letting go of the need there, but staying disciplined in my individual practice. But maybe it'll happen but I don't have any strong uh, opinions when it does or doesn't. Okay, and then we release. Come all the way back out. Around to all fours, get rid of the block. Little cat and cow. And into downward facing dog, give a full body stretch. Let's do twist and monkey pose. A reminder that we know kind of the actions of the body necessary for this. Step your right foot forward and set the back knee down and then both hands go to the inside of your foot. Walk the right foot a little bit out to the side. Turn the toe, knee, hip out about 30 degrees. And then if you place more weight a little bit forward and over onto that left hand, it's gonna give you more room. Okay, here's why we did those big circles in side angle pose. Take your right hand straight out in front of you. And then as you breathe, lift the right hand all the way up to the sky and do a big rainbow shape backwards. Can you kind of imagine yourself how we were working in um, side plank here? And you have to keep that sense of control in the abdomen, press down and through the left hand so that the shoulder doesn't get too weighty. And then do bend your right knee. I'm sorry, that's your left knee. Ooh. 
I mess up rights and lefts once and then I start just doing it all the time. Bend your bottom knee, your left knee, and then the right hand should be able to grab hold. Again, there should be no suffering in head, neck, and shoulders here. You can always look down instead of to the side or up to make that more doable for you. Play with it, see what works. Twisted monkey. Now, everything about this twisted monkey pose right now is exactly the same as funky monkey, except for that right leg. So you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. Release. And take it all the way back to downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. As you all quite well know from me, I try to see the sameness and the shapes so that I'm reminded of all of the things that I can do in the practice that we can do together so that when things are a little bit different, I can go back to all the pieces of the puzzle that made sense before. Set the back knee down, walk the left foot a little bit heel toe out, turn the toe knee hip out to the side. And then you're leaning a little bit forward, a little bit over on that right hand. And I'm not letting myself sink down into the right shoulder. Instead, I'm going to push through the hand to stay lifted through the chest, strong in the abdomen. Left hand carves the rainbow line up and around. And then just pull the back foot into the hand. Again, funky monkeys coming up. It's going to be the exact same thing that you're doing right here, except a different shape in that front leg. Okay, release it all. Back to downward facing dog. Yogi squat, look to your hands. Step your feet on either side of your hands. If you want to sit on a block here to make this easier, feel free to. Or just sit your butt down through the legs, but hovering above the ground. Yogi squat, malasana. Good. Pull strong through the torso. Try to keep, keep some weight in the feet, even if you're sitting on a block. Can you slow the breath, slow the mindset a little bit? Safely get your way out of this. Use the hands to help as you lift through the legs. Stand all the way up at the front end of your mat. Mountain pose, Tadasana. Back to the beginning. Lift your arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Step back to plank. Go knees, chest, and chin here. Eight point pose. That lift of your seat, little grasshopper shape. And then belly down, chest up. Belly up for cobra. Push back to child's pose. Again, and funky monkey knees are down, so if that's concerning to you, put some extra padding down. And let's all crawl out to all fours. Once you are in all fours, let's set the legs first. Lift the right leg up and back. Right knee goes to the outside of the left leg. Instead of sitting down like we did before in cow face pose, we're going to stay with the hips lifted like this. Good. And then the hands change. Left hand goes a little forward and out to the side, just like you did in the pose before this. And can you kick your right heel towards your butt? Right heel towards your butt. 
okay. Right hand carves that rainbow shape out to the front, tone and strengthen in the belly as you try to reach back, hold on to the foot, look over your right shoulder. <laughs> That's funky. Mm -hmm. And then release. And we're gonna stay on the legs, this side, but switch the hands so that we get to try this both directions. Take the right hand down and a little out to the side. Still kick your uh, right heel towards your butt. And now it's the left hand that gets to carve its shape around and hold on to the back foot. Release. Unwind your legs, back to all fours. Okay, let's check out the experience of the second side, see how that one goes. Left leg goes up and back. Cross the knee to the outside of the other leg. And again, instead of sitting back, you're keeping the hips high, right over the line of the knees. And you'll kick your left heel towards your seat. Let's start with the right hand a little forward and out to the side. Left hand having to carve that rainbow shape. Where's the balance? Where's the stability? Maybe you find the foot. Oh, that seems hard. Maybe you don't. But we know that we've, we've greased the shoulders enough, if you will. So if it works, it works. If it's a reach, it's a reach. And then set the hand down. Let's try it on the other side, left hand, a little bit forward and out to the side. Still kicking yourself, left heel towards the seat. All right, carve the, the rainbow, right hand goes out. And I'm doing that rainbow shape so that the head of the shoulder, to the best that we can, is still turned up the whole time. So like thumb up towards the sky instead of down. This side always makes me a little happier, yeah? Uh, save it best for last. Okay, release and unwind those legs. Give it another stretch into downward facing dog, something we know and love. And then set the knees down. I'm going to go knees together, toes together in child's pose and wrap the hands back to your feet. So now your shoulders and your chest get to round down and in. Everything pulls in. Take that warmth of collective energy, the openness of those poses and turn in to you. And when you're ready, pull the torso upright. I always like just a little easy twist one direction and the other. Look over the opposite way. Good. Come across your center. We've done all the hard pieces. Take a seat on your bum. Stretch your legs out in front of you. We are going to go back to the cow face leg on, just on the top leg. So still, if you like some height, you can like literally just be sitting on a block here. Take your right foot in, cross it over. Good old twist. Good. 
On an inhale, come out of the twist. So here's that cow face leg again. We take the right heel towards the outer left hip and try to match knee down to knee. Again, I'm on some height that makes things much more approachable and accessible. Feel free to do the same. If your butt is flat down on the ground, don't worry too much if the knees have some space in between them. Do your best. And then fold over. So the extended leg here should be getting a nice hamstring stretch, but if you feel that as just a certain sense of tightness and uncomfortableness in the back of the knee, bend that bottom knee. I'm even going to just like put a little blanket underneath so that I can't go too far with it. And of course, all of our bodies are different and how we feel, what we feel is exactly what's supposed to be happening. In the most hopeful state, we're getting a nice outer hip stretch on the top leg while we get a nice length and stretch through the hamstring and calf of the extended leg. Okay, here we're gonna switch this around to the other side. Left foot comes in, cross over, do the twist first. I love sitting up on some height for this twist. It just feels way easier to get into a depth of the pose. Sometimes the props help us go further in safe ways. Then we'll come out of the twist. And this one's always called holy cow in yoga hour, the, the like half cow face legs. So the left heel goes close to the outer right hip and then you're trying to set this knee down. And I like smooth through. And then the folding over for me makes that even a little bit more doable to get the knees closer together. Remembering to keep some bend behind the bottom knee if you tend to be hyperextender there. Or if all of the stretch is felt behind the knee, that's not where we want it. We want it in the calf and in the hamstring. Okay, we'll make our way out of this, stretch the legs, give it a little bit of a shift. Come to lie down onto your mat. As you lie back, pull the knees in. And we'll give those outer hips a go one more time. Shoelace pose, or this is cow face legs while you're lying back. Cross the right leg on top of your left. And then the hands grab hold of the front of the opposite feet. And if you really struggle with that seated posture, and I do it again like next week, you can choose to lie down and do this instead. You might get a little bit more out of it. Press your feet into your hands. And I think of this like a tug of war. My hands are trying to pull my feet down, but my feet are trying to push my hands up. And if you're doing that, you'll notice the intensity that comes into the outer hip. Keep squeezing those knees close to the chest, though. Stop your tug of war and switch. Other leg on top. Like eagle pose, if you can cross higher in your thighs, it should make it more accessible as well. And again, you're holding on to your opposite feet, hands to feet, and do that little tug of war. Press the feet into the hands and the hands into the feet.
And then release, unwind yourself, just give yourself a good hug. And here's that opportunity to do any last unwinding bits that feel good to you. I always like a little windshield wiper in the hips after the work from today. Anything that feels right for you for the last uh, minute of movement. If you need to cover up, do that. And then settle into your Shavasana. You can lie down on your back if you'd prefer to sit, sit. It can take a bit to find that stillness and ease. It's one reason that we spend the first hour of practice in movement. Get all the wiggles out. Then when you can release, release. Stella was telling me yesterday that they start music class with a one minute standing meditation and they're supposed to do it quietly and without fumbling and she said it often takes them several, several minutes to get the whole class out of their seat and just standing without any fumbles. Yeah, I get it, girl. We need a lot of time before we can be still. But then do give yourself this gift. Ease and release. It is okay to let it go. Just breathe here. You are welcome to stay in this stillness longer. For those ready, come back to a seated position to this time for closing. We'll close practice in the sound of Om. One translation is as the sacred sound of beginning. If indeed we can touch the stillness, that inward concentration, the sacred sound can help it continue on to the next breath the next moments and it's why we close practice this way to bring the goodness of practice onward you're welcome to sing along to listen or to tune it out
deep breath. Bow in deep gratitude to yourself, each other, and this practice. Namaste, onward.